Hello, I'm going to demonstrate sound and sound waves. Here I have drawn some air molecules. This is a region of uh, air where some sound waves are traveling through, and the regions where the molecules are close together, and other regions where the molecules are further apart. This is what sound waves are like. Similar to uh, Slinky, where here I have regions where the uh, parts of the Slinky are close together, other regions where those parts are further apart. Now, the wavelength is the separation distance between pulses from here to here or from here to here. The speed is how fast these pulses travel through the air. The frequency is the number of pulses per second. And the relationship between frequency, wavelength, and speed is given by this equation, speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. For example, if I have a tuning fork here that vibrates 512 times per second, I set that into vibration, then 512 times every second that tuning fork will send out a pulse that we call a sound wave. Those pulses will travel out at a certain speed, they'll be a certain distance apart, and uh, that's basically what sound is all about. Pulses moving along with a certain speed at a certain wavelength and at a certain frequency. Next what I'd like to do is display that sound on a device we call an oscilloscope. Here I have a drawing of an oscilloscope with a signal on it, but before we put a signal on the oscilloscope, you notice that the, the uh, signal is just a flat line. And what happens with the oscilloscope is we have a beam of electrons that go through a tube and they draw a line on the face of the oscilloscope. You're looking at a line out here. I have a similar tube back here with a straight line going across. So if that beam of electrons moves along without moving up and down, just moves along with a certain speed and then goes back and then moves along again, it'll draw a line over itself many times. And uh, that's the trace that you now see on the oscilloscope. But suppose I were to, as that line moves along, I also move it up and down with a certain frequency, such as the frequency of vibration of a tuning fork, for example, and I can do that electronically. If I have something moving up and down like this, but not moving along, it'll draw that kind of a path. If it moves along without moving up and down, it'll draw that kind of a path. But suppose it moves up and down and moves along at the same time, then what it'll do is it'll draw this kind of a path. And so that's the kind of a signal I've shown on the oscilloscope here on the chalkboard, and that's the kind of a signal we can get when we look at sound from the such devices such as the tuning fork or any sound source, and we feed that information into the oscilloscope, which I'll do in just a uh, minute or two. Now, if I have something that's wiggling up and down with a higher frequency, but moving along at the same speed, then what will happen is... those pulses will show up as being closer together. So what the oscilloscope basically does is it's a way of measuring the frequency. Here the frequency is low when the, when the signals are far apart and the frequency is high where they're close together. Now I'd like to talk about loudness. I'm going to take a frequency uh, here of 256 cycles per second, start it into oscillation, and then I'm going to bring it up close to the microphone. The sound will get louder and what I'd like you to do is watch what happens to the amplitude as the sound gets louder. And you'll see that there's a relationship between loudness and amplitude. I'll start with 256 cycles per second. Let's try that with a higher pitch, higher frequency. And higher frequency still. So just as pitch is related to frequency, loudness is related to amplitude. 